Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Gareth here from tastetudes.com. Earlier in this course, we looked at how to use the marquee tools to make specific selections and fill with color. In Photoshop, to make shapes, we can indeed use the marquee tool to first draw a shape with the selection tools and fill with color. Though in Photoshop, we also have a specific tool to make shapes. This is called the shape tool. You will find that using this tool over making shapes with the lasso and marquee tools will prove more flexible. In this video, we will be looking at the shape builder tools and I will be demonstrating how to use them. So to follow along with this video, you will need to open this document I have prepared especially for this tutorial. This document can be found in the essential practice folder in the project folder. Now you can download this project folder for free. The download link is in the description. So with the project folder open, click essential practice, open the shapes folder and open the shapes tool PSD and you should have something that looks like this. So here on the left, I have some examples of some shapes that can be created using the shape tool. As you can see, we have a range of effects applied to them. Now, if we come over to the layers panel in the example area folder, we have a layer folder here called shapes. If I toggle this down, we can see that contained in this folder is each of these shapes on their own layer. But now if we look closer at the layers, we can see something different here that we have not seen up until this point on the course. Each one of these shapes has a particular icon on their image thumbnail in the layers panel. So what does this mean? Well, this means that these are shape layers. These are shapes made by the shape tool and are made from paths. Now, we have not got into paths yet. We will be going into more depth about paths in Photoshop in a later episode. But for now, just bear with me. This will make sense shortly. So shapes that have been created with the shape tool can be edited quite easily. But what we must keep in mind is that to edit them, we need to use a new set of tools to do so. Because these shapes are made from paths, we will need to use the path selection tool. So first, I'll come and select the square layer in the layers panel. I'll press V to activate the move tool. So with the move tool active, we can simply move the shape around in the canvas area. But now, should we wish to edit the shape, I will need to activate the path selection tool. So the path selection tool can be found in the menu towards the bottom near the type tool. If I click and hold on the white arrow, we will see the tool expand to reveal another tool represented by a black arrow symbol. Okay, so with the square shape selected in the layers panel, if I come over to the menu and select the path selection tool, notice what happens. What you can see now is a thin gray stroke appear around the shape in the canvas area. This thin gray stroke represents the path that makes up this shape. Also notice up in the control panel, we can see a whole range of options become available. Now with the path selection tool, I'm going to select the square shape. Upon click, I will now see four points become visible around the outside of my shape. Now with the path selection tool still active, if I now come to the layers panel, select the next shape, the rounded rectangle shape, and then click on the shape, here we can see eight points around this shape. Same with the ellipse, same with the triangle, and the same with this line, and likewise with the custom shapes below. Notice on the custom shapes, we have a lot of points that make up the shapes. Now, if you're familiar with how vectors work in Adobe Illustrator, this will make sense. So essentially, all these shapes are created with paths, unlike raster images and shapes that are created with physical pixels. We learned earlier in a previous episode that if you repeatedly scale up and down a raster image drastically, you will get pixelation and distort the image because raster images are made from physical pixels. If I wanted to scale a shape made with a path, made with the shape tool up and down drastically, there would never be any pixelation as these shapes are not made with physical pixels. They are made from values determined in the points on the path. So when designing in Photoshop, it would be beneficial to use the shape tool instead of creating raster shapes made with the lasso and marquee tools. You will find 
you will have more flexibility to maintain control. So as an exercise, we are going to create some shapes over here on the right to learn how to use the shape tool. So first I'll come over into the layers panel, toggle up the example area folder and toggle down the exercise area folder. I'll click on the shape area layer and begin simple to create a square. So the shape tool can be found in the menu towards the bottom under the path selection tool. Now if I click and hold on the shape tool, we can see there is a range of shapes we can choose from. So I will start by selecting the rectangle shape tool. With this selected, I'll just come up and draw on top of my guide below, like so. Now as you click and drag, you can see an outline representing the shape you will create upon release. So you can click and move this around freely to make a rectangular shape. On this occasion, I wish to make a perfect square, so if I press and hold shift on the keyboard, I will be able to create a perfectly scaled square like so. Upon release, I have created a square shape. So once the shape is created, we will notice a new layer appear in the layers panel with the special shape layer icon. And up in the control panel, we can see a variety of options become active. So starting over on the left, we can see two values fill and stroke. So if I click on the fill color, I can easily change the color. So in this instance, I'll choose a red. Easy. Okay, so next I'll create a new shape. This time I'm going to click and hold on the shape tool in the menu and select the rounded rectangle shape. Now before I come and draw my new shape, if I pay close attention to the control panel, there are some options I can tweak here. For example, here over on the right, I can tweak the radius of the corners. So first I'll type in 10 pixels, press enter and draw my shape. We can see here we have rounded corners, but not like the example. So I'll press command Z to undo. This time I'll click into the radius and type 60 pixels. Press enter and draw a new shape. And that's looking a lot closer to the guide. So up in the control panel, I can click the fill color and I'll change this to a blue but also we have a stroke color next to this. So I'll go ahead and click into this and change it to orange. Upon adding a stroke, we can see a stroke appear on the shape. So this stroke is completely customizable now. Notice next to the stroke color, we have a stroke weight. I'll click into this and type 10 pixels and press enter. Then I'll click back in and press three. So here we have the flexibility to toggle stroke color and size. So next I'll come back into the shape builder tool and this time select the ellipse tool. I'll come into the canvas area and click and drag to draw an ellipse. Remember by pressing and holding shift on the keyboard, we can get a perfect ellipse. So I'll draw over my guide and release. Now we can see it's not exactly the same size. Fear not, I can use the free transform tool here. So I'll press command T to activate the free transform. I'll press and hold shift on the keyboard then click and drag on the bottom right point to scale up like so, until I get the size similar to the guide. Easy. So I have this ellipse here, and we can see it's carrying the same color effects as the previous shape. So this time I'll click to change the color to yellow, and I'll change the stroke to blue. On shapes, you can customize the stroke even further. Up in the control panel, next to the stroke size, you will also notice a stroke type. In this instance, I'll click this, and here we have some options. I'll click the third one down, and now we have this dashed stroke with circles. At the bottom of the stroke type, we have some additional options. If I click on the alignment option, I can set the stroke to outside. So now I have a circle dashed stroke on the outside of my shape, nice. So next I'll come back into the shape builder tool and select the polygon tool. Now, likewise, with the rounded rectangle tool, we can toggle some values up in the control panel. With the polygon tool active, we can set how many sides we wish to apply to the shape. So first I'll type in three, press enter and draw the shape like so. So here I have a triangle, but on this occasion, I want to create a pentagon. So I'll just press undo. Up in the sides value, I'll add in five, press enter and draw a new polygon shape. And now I have a pentagon shape. 
So applied to the pentagon shape is the same color effects we used on the previous shape. This time I'll click and change the fill color to a magenta and I'll change the stroke to black. In the stroke type, I'm going to click on the top line to set this back to normal. Down on the alignment, I'm going to set this to outside. Then over on the corners, I'm going to set this to rounded. Easy. So earlier, we saw that when we created new shapes, the color effects were carried across from the previous shape. This time, before I create my shape, I'm going to come into the Layers panel and click off any shape layer I have selected. This will ensure that when I create my new shape, I will not carry the same style effects across. So next, I'm going to create a line stroke. I'll come back into the Shape Builder tool and select the Line tool. Before I draw my stroke, I'm going to set the weight up in the Control panel to 7 pixels. Then I'll come and draw a stroke like so. Now, by pressing and holding Shift, you can get a perfectly straight line. Upon release, I will have my new line shape. I'll come up into the Control panel and change the color of the stroke to green to change the color of the line. So that's how we can create lines quite swiftly in Photoshop. So for the last two shapes, we will use the Custom Shape tool. By choosing the Custom Shape tool, with it active, up in the Control Panel, you can choose from a variety of shapes that come pre-installed with Photoshop. I can come over to Shape on the Control Panel and click this to make a choice. To the right of this menu, there is a small cog. By pressing this, you can choose from a variety of categories. So I'll choose Arrows, I'll pick an arrow shape, and click and draw onto the canvas area like so to create the custom shape. On this occasion, I'll set the fill color to none and the stroke color to green, and I'll set the stroke size to three. So now I have a transparent shape with a stroke around the outside. On the stroke type, I'll set the align to the middle and corners to hard. Easy. So I'll make one last custom shape. With the custom shape tool still active, I'll come back up to the shape selector. I'll click the cog. This time I'll select animals and select a dog shape. I'll click and draw the shape. This time, if I click the fill color, instead of applying a solid color, I'm going to look closely at the options at the top of the menu and this time select a gradient. From the gradient option below, I'll select one and apply the gradient effect. And should I wish, I can add new colors and tweak the gradient. So that is how you can create shapes very easily and customize the color and stroke effects. In the next video, we are going to learn about the type tool and look at how we can create and manage type in Photoshop. See you in the next video.